All right, so welcome to the third lesson in Unit 5. Uh, this is 5.3, Interpreting Graphs. So in this unit, we're going to be talking about analyzing uh, very basic graphs, and we're going to even get to drawing some basic graphs given a certain situation. So most of the graphs that we're going to deal with today are going to be with uh, time speed graphs. Uh, but before we get to that, let's do a bit of a review of what we did yesterday. So yesterday we talked about functions, and functions being a special type of relation. So they relate data in a special kind of way. And we said that a function is a relation where each element in the domain is only associated with one element in the range. And remember the domain being the first set of data. So if we look at this one here, this arrow diagram, and we saw this one yesterday, uh, each of the vehicles is associated with only one number in the range. So since every element in the domain is only associated with one element in the range, that is a function. In this case, it is not true that each element in the domain is associated with the range, and the one that doesn't follow that rule is the two right here. Two is associated with bicycle and motorcycle, and that's enough to make this a non-function relation. All right, uh, so here's the speed and time graphs. There's a speed time graph and an acceleration time graph. Uh, and these are the types of graphs that we'll be dealing with today. Okay, so here's our first example. Here we have a scuba diver's dive in the graph. So we have two sets of data. We have the depth and we have the time. Now when we draw graphs, we're always going to have the independent variable on the bottom or along the horizontal axis which we'll call x and we'll discuss that later on in future lessons. The depth is going to be the dependent variable. Remember the dependent variable depends on time and it makes sense that time is the independent variable because nothing changes time. Four minutes is four minutes and nothing can really change that unless you're traveling close to the, the speed of light. Uh, but apart from that, time is pretty much always going to be the independent variable because time marches along irrelevant of everything else. That makes depth de the dependent variable because the depth is completely dependent on how much time uh, the diver has spent underwater. We can also call this the domain and this the range because the independent variable is always associated with the domain and the dependent variable is always associated with the range and in graphs you'll always see them written this way the independent variable or the domain is always along the horizontal or x-axis and the dependent variable uh, and the range is located along the vertical axis but we will talk about this uh, much more in depth in future lessons so let's look at A uh, how many minutes did the dive last? Well, here we're going to look at the whole graph. Uh, the diver started here at time zero, dove to a maximal depth of 20 meters, and then came all the way back up to sea level at this time right here, which is more than 28 minutes. And if we look at the scale that they've used, uh, here we have every second line is four minutes. So that makes every line in increments of two minutes. This would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and we continue that all the way up to 26 and 30. So therefore, how many minutes did the dive last? 30 minutes. Now, uh, what time did the diver stop her descent? Well, she started her descent at time zero, dove all the way down to 12 meters, to a depth of 12 meters. It took her four minutes. And then she hung out at 12 meters for a bit. She hung out at 12 meters for exactly four minutes before descending any further. But then she decided to descend all the way down to 20 meters and then hung out there for about four minutes. So at what time did she stop her descent? Well, she stopped it right here, and that is at 10 minutes. C asks, what was the greatest depth the diver reached? Well, we already talked about it. It's right here at 20 meters. Oops. And for how many minutes did she stay at that depth? Well, she reached her depth of 20 meters here, 
and then she started her ascent back up to the surface here. So that's an increment of four minutes because it's from 10 to 14. So she stayed down there for four minutes. Good. So uh, here's our second example. Uh, this graph relates costs and masses of various bags of popcorn. This is really random. I don't know why they chose this, but we're going to roll with it. All right. So here they're telling us each point on the graph represents a bag of popping corn. Explain the answers to the questions below. So A asks, which bag is the most expensive and what does it cost? Well, uh, here we have cost here. And here we have mass here. Uh, remember again that mass is going to be the independent variable or the domain. Cost will be the dependent variable or the range. And that kind of makes sense because the cost of the popcorn is going to depend on the mass of the bag or how big the bag is. So uh, back to the question, which bag is the most expensive? Uh, we have cost here. So let's see, C, bag C is located here. And this is clearly the most expensive. And we're going in increments of two. So we can add in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the most expensive bag costs seven dollars all right B which bag has the least mass what is this mass okay so now we're looking at our horizontal axis or x-axis uh, the least mass is going to be the one that's furthest to the left that's bag B and it ends up right here so somewhere between four and eight hundred so if we look at this every second line Every second unit, they're going, they're jumping 400 grams. So this one here will be 200 grams. So every line or every unit is an increment of 200. So this would be 400, this would be 600. And B is smack in the middle of 400 and 600. So that's 500 grams. C, which bags have the same masses? What is this mass? So when talking about mass, we're looking at this horizontal axis. Uh, well, E has a mass of right between 16 and 200, so this is going to be a mass of 1,800 grams, as well as D. So if you can tell, E and D are on the same line. They're both associated with 1,800 grams. So it's going to be bag D and bag E, and the mass is 1,800 grams. Uh, D, which bags cost the same? What is this cost? So now we're looking at our vertical axis here. We want to know which two bags fall along the same cost. Well, if we look at A and we look at E, they're perfectly lined up along this, this line here, and that line is associated with a cost of $4. So both A and E are $4, so we go A, E, and the cost is four bucks. All right, which bags, C or D, has the better value for the money? So uh, let's check this out. So for C, bag C, you're getting 1,600 grams here for seven bucks. Bag D, you're getting 1800 grams for right between five and six so for five dollars and fifty cents and right away we can tell that clearly D is the better deal because you're getting a lot more popcorn and for a cheaper price and the extension question is does this graph represent a function well remember we said that the mass is the domain because the domain is always located along the horizontal axis, and the cost is the range. So our definition for a function is each element in the domain can only be associated with one element in the range. Well, every bag of popcorn only has one price. Each bag of popcorn is 
only associated with one price. So therefore, each element in the domain is only associated with one element in the range. So this is a function. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm gonna have you guys try this one yourselves. So pause the video here, uh, give this a try, and then I'll show you the answers when you come back. Okay, so I'm not gonna go over this one in detail, uh, but here's the answers so you can check your work. And we'll move on.